How many of you guys have uh, built a rule system? Cool. And how many of you guys have uh, built a machine learning system? And how many folks have built both? <coughs> a few, okay, cool. So um, I'll start off with, with a story. A you know, um, few years ago, I was working for a startup called Flurry. And I was brought in to build the first machine learning pipeline because uh, Flurry was in the business of uh, providing advertising, uh, sorry, providing analytics to mobile apps. And they had started this uh, mobile ad business, and they used to have an ad ops team whose job was really to take uh, into account all the ad delivery constraints that one of the advertisers was setting and figure out how to match that advertiser's ads onto <coughs> publishers. So, for instance, you may want to show ads uh, uh, from a Zynga game onto Supercell and vice versa, right? And this ad ops team was, 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 uh, uh, was amazing, you know? They, they did things which, you know, uh, were like superhuman almost, right? Because they would figure out manually almost that some games are being played at, you know, these hours and, you know, therefore it makes sense to actually match ads of which is, an ad, which is a game ad onto a publisher's platform where most of those users are. But then over time, they build these rules, right, of you know, when to show an ad, who do you match with whom, et cetera, et cetera. And they reached the point where they could not actually get rid of any single rule. They were, they were afraid. They were very, very afraid because they did not know if they were to actually take one of those rules out, then what would happen, right? Because uh, the system just became too complex to reason with, right? So, um, so that's where you know, I, I, yeah, that, that, that's where I would like to uh, then uh, motivate. That's where machine learning comes in. You can actually build a system where you have uh, you know a set of parameters and you have weights, and you can actually uh, uh, train a model based on a particular outcome that you want to achieve. And then you could also modify it when your outcomes are changing, right? And it becomes a more easy to maintain system than a rule system. Uh, in, in, in that scenario, right? Now, uh, one of the things to uh, take note over here is that you know, a lot of times people think machine learning is the sort of the panacea for any of the problems, but sometimes it's not, right? Uh, through the rest of this talk, I'm gonna actually just present some examples where you know, maybe rule system actually makes sense and machine learning doesn't, and vice versa, right? So this is just a, a simple rubric I put together. You know, there are very various parameters that y'all may be considering when you're building your, your intelligent system, right? Interpretability, accuracy, maintenance, and speed of execution, right? So a rule system will provide you, you know, for the most part, until it becomes overly complex, it's gonna be more interpretable, right? Machine learning systems equally interpretable. Deep learning systems where you're using neural nets, they are very hard to reason with. Of course, people are making, uh, uh, research has done, uh, has taken lots of strides into actually making interpretable uh, deep learning models as well. Accuracy, you know, machine learning and deep learning systems will of course provide you much higher accuracy than a rules-based system. Maintenance, you know, machine learning systems may be more easily maintainable than a rule system because of that example I just mentioned earlier, right? And speed of execution, sometimes it's actually very, if, uh, very, uh, very effective to quickly get a rule system up and running, right? So uh, <clears throat> I thought I'll just present a few examples from you know, different experiences I've had over the course of my career. Uh, and one of the examples is the fraud example at Coinbase. So Coinbase, first of all, is a platform where you come to buy and sell digital currency, such as Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, et cetera. And now the fraud pattern at Coinbase is very similar to any e-commerce merchant, except it's actually even more difficult because the thing that you're stealing is cryptocurrency, which is easily transferable and not reversible. It's like the ha act of handing over cash to someone and someone running off with that bag of cash, right? So now how does fraud happen at Coinbase? So fraudster essentially mashes up multiple identities. They steal person, uh, one person Alice's bank account or card information and create a fake account on Coinbase with someone else's social security number or someone else's driver license, right? And then they uh, steal a third person, Carl's mobile phone number, right? And then everyone at Coinbase would think that this account was actually created by, by, by Bob, but it was actually created by uh, the scammer. 
Then the scammer steals the cryptocurrency and Alice notices uh, a fraudulent transaction, calls up her bank, disputes the transaction. We have to return the funds back to Alice and at the same time the scammer has run off with the crypto, right? Now in this case, you know, we use machine learning because machine learning is actually helping us bring together uh, various uh, identities together. So what we do is we take all the different sources of identity for a user, like we take the phone number, we look it up and figure out who has registered this phone number, name and address of that individual. We take the email address, find all the social media profiles associated with it, as well as, you know, uh, uh, we take then the social security number, look up the, the name and address behind it for the driver license, we extract name and address, and then we're essentially trying to do a mismatch across all those identities, and we're trying to make it super hard for the attacker so that they have to actually set up an account which has not only if they've stolen my credit card, they have to set up a, uh, a phone number in my name, with my name and a, a photoshopped ID with my name and address, right? So the reason why machine learning is working in this case is because it's really just trying to do a mismatch detection, right? You could argue that I could also do a mismatch detection using rule system where I could say that if, you know, the name on any two out of those five sources mismatches, then actually ban the user. But then in that case, the false positives would be very high. For instance, my real name is Supranamya Ranjan. It's really long, but I also go by Soups Ranjan, right? So you know, if you were to just use a simple rule like that, you know, you'd be blocking lots of good users, which is where then machine learning comes into play, because now you can actually build transforms which take a look at differences in characters between two names, and also transforms which look at you know, you know uh, differences in characters between street addresses, right? And then you encode all of those into a machine learning system and let it reason with the fact that, yeah, there are real users as well whose names may differ across different sources, as well as there are fraudsters who, whose names are gonna differ across different sources, right? Now, uh, <clears throat> so one of the other reasons machine learning works in our case in this uh, domain is because Fraudsters are constantly talking to each other, and they may have, uh, you know, uh, for instance, they may use a tool because once someone figures out a loophole, they build a tool and sell it to others. So, for instance, once we found that this clean resolution 1364 by 768 had a very low probability of occurrence in real life, but we saw that fraud, we were banning users left and right with that screen resolution. And the reason being that they were all using Windows Remote Desktop Protocol, pretending to be coming from a particular device fingerprint, and RDP had a bug via which the screen resolution was off by a few pixels on each side, which is why then machine learning system latched onto this fact as we were banning accounts that, yeah, the screen resolution is really, really suspicious, and then started giving a high risk score to all users who were using that screen resolution, right? So, you know, I talked about machine learning systems, when, when do they make sense? When does a rule system make sense, right? So sometimes the business use case may just limit the scope of machine learning system, right? So for instance, uh, you know, we may not be, even though we have the capability to train a model very frequently, we may not want to train it very frequently because our risk score is, de is determining a user's purchase power and people treat the purchase power on Coinbase like the credit card limits. They don't want that to go up or down, right? So, um, um, and then in that case, you know, on, on, on the counter side of that, fraud is dynamically evolving. So we have to constantly keep up with fraud. So if I can't train my machine learning system so frequently, what do we do, right? So there, therein comes rules system. So what we've done is we have uh, basically provided tools to our analysts who go in and take a look at things like, you know, anomaly detection. So they look at the blue line over there showing what percent of accounts on Coinbase were created with one particular bank, let's say Wells Fargo. And then the red line is showing that in any given week, how many accounts are being created with Wells Fargo bank accounts, right? Turns out if there's a jump like that or burst like that, then it means that someone stole, you know, a bank of stolen bank accounts, right? And they're creating fake accounts. So then we provide those users to our analysts who review them, and then sometimes they may actually create a rule. So that's my timer. Sometimes they may create a rule which goes the, like follows, like following that if I see anyone who has created an account with a JP Morgan Chase card, with a, a phone which has been issued by Verizon and an ID issued by one of these following states, then let's either ban them or request for additional information, right? So this is one of those examples where, you know, 
a rule system fits in and works very well together with a machine learning system. The one thing that I would recommend if any of you are building a rules-based system is that you have to watch out for the rules in your system, just like that example I mentioned of that ad optimization team. If you have rule after rule, be very careful that you have to retire rules once they stop being effective. So constantly monitor the efficacy of your rules and treat them essentially as technical debt. Right? Uh, I am out of time, so I'm happy to talk more after, uh, afterwards. However, the summary here is you got to use the right tool for the right job. And a rules-based system is quicker and quicker to build and quicker to iterate. However, you have to be very careful about not leaving it around as a technical debt. And you have to also then, at some point, if you want to move towards a machine learning system, you have to know when to move towards it. And then you have to actually build a machine learning system to essentially replace the rule system. So in that respect, you can have you know, your cake and eat it too. You can actually quickly iterate, quickly build intelligence into a product, and then know, you know, quickly build intelligence into a product via rule system, and then know when to transition to a machine learning system. So uh, thank you for your time. Happy to, to, uh, to take questions later on. We will have, I believe, a 10-minute break right now. And please be back in this room at 11 o'clock for Mike's talk. Thank you.